Hey everybody, my name is Jen and this is Jen Geigley Knits. Um, it feels like it's been a long time since I've sat down and done one of these videos because the last three weeks has been Rhinebeck recap videos and a New York City Brooklyn video. And thank you so much to everyone who watched those videos. They are really truly my favorite videos to put together. They're also a ton of work, so thank you for watching them. Um, it is literally thousands of teeny tiny little video clips that I somehow compile and edit together to make some kind of a story recap or you know show our travels. So it is my favorite thing to share. Um, I hope it's worth it and fun to watch. And it's just, it's fun to share. If you you know live somewhere really far away and you wanna see what Rhinebeck is like, I'd like to show you the whole experience. I like you to see everything we saw. If it is too much and too long, you can skip ahead. There's little chapters throughout. So I understand if you can't watch like us walking through 12 barns of yarn, but some of us like to watch, you know, endless amounts of yarn and vendors. I love seeing all that stuff, but um, so thanks for watching. Uh, since I've been home from New York, I have cast on what it feels like a million different projects. I feel like I'm going full force in a million different directions. I have some really fun news that I can't share yet, but some really fun things happening in 2025 that I'm really looking forward to. Big stuff ahead, um, which brings me to a tiny little ask. I am working so hard. Like if this has been, you know, you kind of stumble upon people, I think on the internet, and maybe that's how you found me. But, um, hi Dinah. Um, it might look like we're suddenly like, at the point wherever we're at. Um, but it's been, for me, years and years of building like a little bit of a presence online, getting the courage up to do YouTube or anything like that, um, teaching or, you know, writing patterns. It's all kind of a building block thing that takes so long to build. And um, my next goal here is to build um, an audience of you friends of um, 10,000 subscribers. And I'm so close. I'm also trying to hit that exact same goal on Instagram. I'm also so close there. Um, not that it hugely matters, but I think it's a really fun milestone to see how I've come at least this far, like one by one by one, you know, knitter, one knitter at a time. Um, and that's how I find other people too. I do the exact same thing, but if you would like to subscribe and help me hit my goal, that would be amazing. I'm trying to hit 10,000 here. I'm trying to hit 10,000 on Instagram. Both numbers are so close. They're getting there and getting there. And so I would just appreciate a little bit of help. So if you want to do that today, that would be amazing. Isn't she beautiful? Seriously. She's my best knitting companion and helper and emotional support animal. She's so great. This is Dinah, if you haven't met her yet. And she's our beautiful cat. We've almost had her a year, um, but she is six years old and she is the best knitting companion I could ever have hoped for. She's just the best and she's super snuggly and cuddly and sweet. Right? First up, I have a finished sweater to show you and I'm so excited that this one is finally finished. If you've watched, I think I started this last winter the yarn is huge and it should not have taken me that long, but it just did, so it's fine. This is the Tinned or Tinda, or I don't know how you say it still, sweater from the Sandus yarn book from last winter. I did the exact same colors as the sample and I love it so much. I made it a little bit oversized, like a big comfy sweatshirt and it turned out perfectly. And I used the Sandus yarn, it's Fritis Garn and I love it and I want to knit more sweaters in this yarn because it's really nice, really fast, knits up beautifully. What are you doing, Diana? <laughs> um, but this needs a good soak right now. I think I'm gonna go block it right now. Today is Tuesday and I figured if I block this today, hopefully it'll be dry by Friday and I can try it on again and show you the difference of before and after blocking because blocking is magical. I am a loose knitter and sometimes my color work turns out a little bit uneven because of my loose knitting. I don't have super tight, nice tension. Um, it's not bad, it's fine, but um, sometimes it's a little bumpy, lumpy, not perfect. That's just, I think anyone's color work until you block it, but blocking fixes everything. It really is magic. Um, 
And I think it's an Elizabeth Zimmerman quote, but I could be wrong. So don't like, I don't know for sure. I have to go look it up. But I swear she or someone said that all knitting stitches want to be even. And that is the magic of water and blocking and um, soaking a garment. And it really does even things out so much. And so I'm excited to stick this in the water and look how good. This is, um, so yeah, you've been watching me knit this forever, but this is going to be this year's holiday sweater. And now I'm already done and I'm so happy about that. Um, I love these colors so much. And let's go give it a soak and see the magic happen. Actually, first, before I put it in the water, <laughs> I need to try it on now and show you the lumpy bumpy before so I can show you the beautiful after, hopefully, right? Let's do the whole thing. Also, before I try in the sweater, look at my sweatshirt. I am in love with this sweatshirt. Um, it is from Moon and Yarn Craft Room, which I have only purchased from them kind of in person at different um, events that I've seen them at. I've never been to the shop, but I would love to one day. Um, but it is, I think, the, a local-ish shop to my friends, Twin Aura Knits, Erica and Jess. And I believe Jess has this sweatshirt. That's where I've seen it. And I've also seen Lock Knits and some other people online that have this. And then they went on sale on the Moon and Yarn website. And so I grabbed one. And it's like my new favorite, very, very cozy, comfy, um, knitty sweatshirt. So I just wanted to share my cute sweatshirt. Now we'll try on the sweater. Okay, there it is, unblocked, a little bit, um, you know, you can tell it's like, it's been A, bunched up in my knitting bag, B, smooshed onto different needles, C, um, just needs a little bit of help. <laughs> Let's take a look. So hip length, kind of longer sleeves in case I wanna roll them up. Um, and yeah, just looking a little lumpy. I need to get like a good shot of the whole thing for the before blocking. I do love it though. Look how easy and fun and cozy, like for a very cold, winter, December day. This is it. Okay, it's perfect and I love it so much. Anyway, it's not perfect though, because it's a little bit in need of a good soak. When I block something kind of large, I usually use this awesome bin that I have from Ikea as my soak bin. No surprise, Ikea, yellow. <laughs> I think they still have this one or something similar on their website, but it's the perfect size without like filling up my entire sink um, for a sweater. And then I usually use like a mixing bowl or something smaller if I'm just doing socks or something, but this is perfect. So let's go fill it up. Um, I got a brand new soak at Rhinebeck. It's the new Fresh Mint, I think it's called, Wild Mint. And so I'm gonna go try it out for the first time on my sweater and let's go do it. So I'm sure you know the drill. Um, I'm sure you've blocked something before, but if you haven't, um, I just fill up the bin. And luckily I have a sink with no divider in the middle. You know, sometimes there's like a double sink, but they have a middle thing. But my bin fits perfectly in my sink. And I'm gonna put a couple drops of this in some lukewarm water and then throw in my sweater. Also, it's not necessary to fill it all the way up and lukewarm water is better than hot because it could felt the wool, especially since my sweater is pure wool. Um, lukewarm water is best. Also, this scent smells so good. I really like it, especially for a holiday sweater. It kind of smells awesome. Um, also, I was gonna mention this is a no rinse wash or, you know, soak. You don't have to rinse it when you're done. You, um, this recommends soaking it for 15 minutes. I usually do a half hour. And then um, it recommends one teaspoon per gallon of water. And I just squeeze some in. You don't really have to measure, but that's a good guideline. 
And I was gonna also mention it is plant-derived, biodegradable, dye-free, and phosphate-free, which is really nice to know. And so if you've never used soap before, I'm a big fan. I think we have enough water now, so I'm just gonna put it in. And really hope that my swatch test with the red was accurate. <laughs> I'm sure it's okay though. Is there anything more satisfying than submerging a sweater into water? I don't think so. So I'm not really agitating anything, but I am kind of spreading out the sweater kind of flat, especially I really want this color work to even out. So I'm giving that some space and then just kind of maneuvering things around so everything gets an equal chance to be submerged. And then I'm just gonna let it sit for a while and come back to it, squeeze it out and put it on the blocking mats. While my tin sweater is taking a bath, I thought I would show you some of the things I've been knitting since I got home from New York City. Um, the first one is something I'm very excited about and nervous about, and it's a huge undertaking and it's very different, but I'm loving it. And that's like the whole intrigue of it is kind of the unknown and can I finish it? And it's just so different. And I have other deadline knitting that I maybe should be working on, but I've been working on this because it's fun. So I'll show you. So, um, I've mentioned before that in June of next year, I'm going to be going to Iceland on one of the Helen Magnuson tours. And she lives in Iceland. She gives seasonal tours all over Iceland. There's tours that um, go through volcanoes and glaciers. The one I'm doing is called Knitting Under the Midnight Sun. And it's during June when the sun doesn't set except for like an hour or two each night. So it's gonna be really interesting. But immediately when I signed up, I was thinking, okay, I wanna knit Icelandic sweaters to wear in Iceland because of course, right? And Helen has tons of patterns. I've made her crowberry from Modern Daily Knitting Field Guide from last year, which was kind of the rust and then it had crowberries in green in kind of a mossy green color. Um, but then I was looking through her other patterns because I'm like, I should knit a Helen sweater to go on the Helen tour in Iceland because what's cooler than that? So, um, and she has her own yarns and kits to go with these patterns. And so I found, you know, the hardest, most time consuming sweater I could possibly find. There is um, some big, she has some lopey ones that would be much more doable if I cannot do this in time, but I am giving myself enough of a head start that I think it's still possible that I can do this, but I do have a lot coming up and going on. But anyway, I'm, I'm gonna try. So this is a kit for the Mosi sweater. It's M-O-S-I. Um, and this is like her little cool bag. Look how cute it is. So this is the Icelandic lamb's wool. So she has different yarns. One of them was from the field guide. I think it was this weight also. And it was like a fluffy mohair lace weight. And I cannot think of the name of that. I'll have to go look it up. But I got a, the other one, like the woolier one. And it's very different. It is also lace weight. So I am knitting a lace weight colorwork sweater. Here's the pictures. know I'm very into anything kind of chartreuse. I love black. I love how this sweater is meant to match the Icelandic moss. That's like the whole inspiration. So I got her exact um, kit colors, which is um, greens and black and this chartreuse yellow. But it is little tiny gauged. Um, very interesting to knit with because um, as you can see, it's, it's really, really small. It's smaller than it even looks here. It's really, it's really, really small. It's like knitting a sweater with sock yarn, but it is also fuzzy. And so in the beginning, I was knitting on a US one for the collar. It's a top down raglan color work, not raglan, top down color work yoke, whatever. <laughs> I, I started on a US one 
And then I made some modifications. I'll tell you about that in a bit. And then now I have moved up to the US two needle for the, for the yoke. So this sweater uses a very special yarn that is Helene Magnuson's very own yarn that she developed herself, which is amazing. Um, and I got it in the original colors, which is anise green, moss green, and raven black. And it is fingering weight, Icelandic wool. And let me just read a little bit about it. Um, with Gillatrut, Helene Magnuson has created a, a unique Icelandic plied lace weight made of soft 100% Icelandic wool, lamb's wool. It is spun from fleeces that Helen hand selects and grades one by one after the first shearing of the Icelandic lambs. Um, the carefully crafted result of working with our trusted partners is an Icelandic lamb's wool yarn of unparalleled softness and fineness. <laughs> um, it has two plies, which gives it strength. And you can tell it's very strong. It is not um, fluffy or fall apart. It is like, it's a strong, soft, fuzzy yarn. And it is something else. This is such a different project. It's been, it's, it's, it's um, taken a little practice to get the hang of it. And this does not look like much right now, but this is hours and hours of work. <laughs> and I made, that was Dino, wow. Um, I made some modifications, which I will talk about in a sec, but I am so excited about this project. I think it's so beautiful in her photos. Um, and I just think it's a dream to be able to possibly wear this in Iceland amongst the beautiful hills and the, in the moss. And I just think there's nothing um, that could make me happier. And so I'm going for it. And if I can't finish it, I'll knit a different one of her patterns in Lopi, which would be more manageable, but I just want this sweater. I want to wear it in Iceland and that is my only goal right now. So, okay, so here's where we're at. The thing about some of the Icelandic sweater patterns, um, and I was talking with my friend Erica about this over coffee, I don't know who's these stitches, um, is that a lot of them do not have neck shaping in the back, the colorwork patterns that, it's just a colorwork yoke and it's, um, symmetrical all the way around. And so if you like a little neck shaping to make it sit up on your shoulders, like a crew neck, um, I really have a thing about that. It's, I think that it's just, it's like not a big deal, but to me it is. Um, I like neck shaping in the back. I want it to sit higher in my back. Otherwise I feel like things are sliding back like this and feeling like ugh, they're gonna, I don't know. I like to have it fit in a crew neck way. So, um, I, before I started this color work, I made the collar taller in the back and added short rows to the ribbing. Um, and then this was not meant to be a long collar. It was supposed to be like about an inch tall, but I decided to make it double since it is a thinner weight yarn. I wanted a little bit of stability and sturdiness so it didn't stretch. I just have a paranoia about that. So I made it double tall and double thick. So this will fold down to about an inch once I sew it in, so that'll be like that in the front, just like the pattern sample. The back, once I fold it in, will be just a bit taller too, more like that, so that I have a little bit standing up in the back. And then I also added short rows in the chartreuse before I started the color work. I just went back and forth because that was the first color I'd be using for that color work section and added another almost inch, maybe three quarters inch to the back. So I have a little bit standing up back here to keep it um, sitting the right way uh, when I wear it. And then I started the color work and it does not look like I'm very far, but I'm surprised I've made it through this much already. I've done a, a lot of increases. Um, you'd probably never guess, but there's already 300 stitches <laughs> just in this little neck portion and so I'm moving up very quickly to the next sections where it's going to be you know more and more and more and each round takes much longer to complete but it's really enjoyable really fun to get to the next section um this is where I'm at so the next part is kind of a chartreuse part with some black motifs going through it but I so the other thing about this yarn is it is not like perfect wool color work. This is a little bit airy, I would say, and a little bit of fuzz in there. And it's not like perfectly consistent little stitches. And that's the beauty of it. It almost looks fuzzy from afar, but you see these beautiful 
shapes forming as well. And it's just really fun. I love the contrast. I love the colors. I love a challenge. And I think if I just slowly and steadily keep going to the next little pattern repeat, I'm going to be able to knock this out, hopefully in time to where it's Iceland. I'm pretty motivated. Um, I might go ahead and just sew the collar down just so when I try it on, eventually it'll be ready. And I just would kind of like to see what it looks like folded and sewn down. Or you can do, I'm sure you've seen, there's lots of ways to do a fold in collar. There's the way where you take a needle and you like knit it in, or you can just stitch it and sew it down. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I might just stitch and sew it down just because of the nature of this yarn, but I'm excited to see it that way. And then it, I feel like I'm so far, but it <laughs> doesn't look like it, but I'm excited about how this is turning out. I'm excited to keep going with it. And I think it's going to be really cool in the end if I can finish it. Also, I love how this whole project comes in this small little bag. I believe there's five skeins of each color for the size I'm making, and it all fits in this tiny little canvas bag. And they're just such little baby skeins. And so I've been keeping the whole thing just inside my yarn bowl, which was made by my friend Emily. She does pottery and it's like extra special to me. But yeah, I can keep the whole thing just in the bowl. So wish me luck on this sweater. I was gonna try to get to more things, but I think it's time to get my sweater out of the water and get it laid out on the blocking mats that are behind me because I have to go pick up Bowie in a minute from school. So I should get this laid out before he gets here. And then I'll see if I have time to go over some of my other whips with you in a minute. So I'm just gonna drain the water and then I'm going to squeeze it out gently. Luckily, it did not bleed from what I can tell, hopefully. Or did it? I think I'm okay. Looking good. I just kind of plopped it onto the floor, onto this beach towel, and I'm going to roll it up like a cinnamon roll and try to squeeze out as much water as I can. This is a pretty heavy sweater, so it felt like it was holding a lot of water, but I think I got most of it out. And now I'm just gonna take it over to my blocking mat and spread it out here. I don't think it really needs to be pinned or anything, um, but I'm gonna spread it out and get it kind of into the dimensions that I want it to be. Um, I was one of those people that really resisted getting a blocking mat for a long time because I didn't think I needed one. I would use my ironing board or something else, but I really do think these are worth the investment because you can really stretch something out and I could even get, I don't even have that many, I could get more to have more room, but they are really helpful. Now that this is laid out flat on the mats, I am so excited to try this on again after it's dry. Um, the stitches are so much more uniform. My color work looks so much better. There are some little fibers that crossed over in a couple of areas and I thought it was bleeding, but I think it's just the fibers. I have to go over it with a gleaner, but this looks awesome and I'm so excited to try it on when it's dry. Okay, my sweater is blocking and drying and I'm so happy to get that done today so I can hopefully try it on Friday. I can't wait to try it on when it's dry. I'm so excited about that sweater. And in the meantime, I was gonna go through my whips really quickly. I'm not gonna go into detail, but I'll just show you what I've been working on randomly. And it's kind of fun because there's a bunch of weird stuff, but I was also going to talk about Knit by Midwest, which is something we're bringing back. Um, I don't know if I've ever mentioned it on this channel before, but Erica and I started a little local knitting retreat, knitting and crochet fiber arts retreat probably over 10 years ago. I'd have to look again and see when our first one was. I think it's been over 10 years, but um, 
we probably hosted eight or so years in a row and then the pandemic kind of stopped it. And then we were nervous to get people together again in a space until like every year we kind of wanted to do it and then we didn't. Um, but this year we decided to just make it easy and a little bit smaller scale. So we used to have like a full weekend with catered lunches and beautiful, like I would make cupcakes. We do all these things and we'd have like maybe a little fashion show or a little bit of knitting yoga or, you know, whatever, but it was mostly unstructured and just time to knit and crochet with your friends. Um, we usually rented out this lodge in Walnut Woods, which is local to us, which was beautiful this time of year with the leaves and everything. We usually did it every November on the weekend of Daylight Savings weekend. But this year we decided, okay, so it's been since 2019 since we've done Knit by Midwest. And so people over the years have expressed their interest and like said that they missed it. And, but the thing that kind of would hold us back is um, like the catering thing. And some of the stuff was just like a lot of work. <laughs> I don't know if we got lazy or I don't know, kind of that, but we decided to have a knitting or a knit by Midwest hangout. And that is this Saturday. Don't get too excited. It's sold out in like less than two minutes. We couldn't believe it, but it's kind of a small space. We just wanted to start small and easy and ease our way back into it. And then hopefully we will host more events again in the future. Like we used to do the big weekend. Maybe we'll do that again. Maybe not. Maybe this is the way to go and keep it easy. But we did bring back the shirts and every year we had a different design for the t-shirts. And usually I did it, but sometimes we hired other local artists to make the art. Um, this is our first t-shirt design. We brought it back this year and I just added a little year below, but that we did a little pre-order for t-shirts and some of you even bought um, t-shirts who don't live here, which was really sweet. So thanks. But we're going to have our little knitting retreat back um, this Saturday, which is great timing because a lot of people have expressed interest in getting together right now, um, post-election especially, just kind of getting together and having community and doing our favorite thing together. So we're excited to be hosting this at a new location this Saturday. I can't wait. I'll, um, I'll maybe take a little video of that as it's happening and show you next week because it'll be fun for sure. So Knit by Midwest Hangout happening Again, we're excited to have it again, and that's going to be fun. Um, as far as whips, I did cast on my Gudrun Johnston Melby hat. I bought this yarn from Winging a Prayer at Rhinebeck as I drop it. Um, and this is how much I've done. <laughs> Melby is a colorwork hat. They had a sample of it in the barn, and I just really liked it. Um, they didn't have kits, but I just kind of grabbed the kind of similar colors to the sample that they had. So the Ravelry pattern example shows like kind of a light oatmeal version where like the main color is this on Ravelry. And then the sample in the barn had like a dark brown black um, with the blue and this old gold, my favorite, and kind of a purpley pink. And so I grabbed these and an oatmeal. Um, and so I'm doing the dark version. I um, they suggest a contrast edge, which I really like. And so I did the old gold on my contrast edge and I'm excited to move up. I have to go find my US four. That's what's holding me up is I have to go up a needle size for the color work. And so that's coming next. And I bet it's gonna speed along because it's just gonna be fun, I can tell. And this is, she has like a DK hat kit that Erica bought and she's already finished hers. Mine is a fingering weight. So mine's gonna take a little bit longer because it's more stitches and I'm knitting like 10 other things, but I can't wait to get this going. Um, it'd be really fun to wear it this winter. I really like these colors and I think it's really fun. So that is hat number one that I have going on. I think I have another, I have this one going and I do not even remember exactly what pattern I was using, but I think I started this before Rhinebeck. This is Rhinebeck yarn from two years ago. It might be the Oslo hat or one of those. There's so many one by one rib hats and I'll have to go see, like I'll just pick one of the decrease, you know, methods and good enough, right? <laughs> but I wanna get that finished because it's a really cool um, yarn blend and I love it. And then I also have the, I'm gonna say it right this time, Parkside hat by Layla Raven. And this is Peace Fleece. And this is the funny thing is because um, we've been knitting these hats, or Erica made already two of them, 
Um, and then we saw Layla Rabin at Rhinebeck and we didn't realize it was her pattern that we keep going to for this weight of yarn. And so I'm making, I'm right to the decreases for this one. Um, and th this goes so fast and it's such a good use. If you have one ball of piece fleece in a random color in your stash, which is what this was. I also have a yellow one that I want to make too. Um, it's just a really nice, warm one by one rib hat with the parallel inc decreases that are like, a, you know, like a middle row and then they come out simultaneously. There's a name for it. I can't think of what it is, but it's a really nice hat. It's a great pattern. So I'm making one of those. And then I started a sleeve of, so I already thought, I, thought, I forgot I did this. I was talking about how I was maybe gonna knit a bigger Icelandic wool sweater for Iceland. And I already forgot that I had cast on a sleeve for one. And I think it's called, let me look. I think it's called my, Iceland, yeah, it is. My Icelandic sweater, this is a Hoyan Magnuson sweater and it has a beautiful flower detail up here and this is the bulky lo lopey and so I know this one will go really fast in case I can't do my tiny lopey in time they're so different it's so funny like I am just really I have Iceland on the mind and it's kind of a motivator so but this will go so fast this I feel like this took 15 minutes to make this sleeve um, so that's exciting too. I love a, a quick project. So, and the color work on this is gorgeous and it would be a treat to wear this. So, um, her sample, I think for this was in cream in the main color. And then the flowers up here are blue and red and green with a little bit of yellow. And I just thought that would look really cool on Navy. So I'm trying it on this deep, deep Navy, which I love. And yeah, what do they call this bigger lopey? Not the let lopey, but the... Alifos Lopi. So this is like the chunkier Lopi. And I think it's on US 10s. Yep. US 10 needles. So that'll go fast. And then last but not least, <laughs> I have a good start on a Felix cardigan in black. I have been wanting a black cardigan for way too long just to throw over a t-shirt or a random anything, you know, just as a layer, even as a dressed up layer, a black cardigan is so nice. So I'm just making a Felix and you can kind of see my um, increases here that make that, that decorative whole pattern, which is really cool. And I'm just using black Lopi that I got on sale from Modern Daily Knitting a while ago. They had bags of this. Um, I was at their shop for a workshop, probably the Arne and Carlos one. And they had a couple full bags of Lopi at a little bit of a discount. And I was like, I'll take that black Lopi. <laughs> um, it was like one of the last colors they had left. So I was happy to snatch it up. And um, now I have enough to make this Felix, which I've never made a Felix. And there's, it's such a fun, quick little project. This is on US 11s, I think. Nope, that's a US 10 also, but it feels huge compared to my lace weight. This is like speedy and fun. Um, I also think in that bag of Lopi, I think I have enough left to make the black and oatmeal mitten and hat set that I wanted to make that was also Helen Magnuson patterns. Um, and so that's exciting because I think I just wanted black and oatmeal for these very simple, they're not simple, they're very, you know, color work, but um, I didn't want to have to go buy more Lopi, so I'm going to use the black I already have. I think I have enough of it. And that is what I am working on since I got home from New York. Also a pair of socks. Yeah, the stripey socks. Are those over here? Yes. These stripey socks that I had started in New York. Still working on these. They just need heels and toes. And the cuffs are done. And I feel like there's more, but I think it was just the tint that I was thinking of that I did finish. So I finished one thing, started a bunch of others, but I'm not feeling bad about it. It's fun and inspiring to knit in this time of year. And it just feels like the right thing to do. It is Friday and I have a brand new sweater in my winter wardrobe and I'm loving it so much. I can't even tell you. Um, it's all dry. It's blocked. It looks a lot more even. Um, the color work especially looks a lot more even. It looks so nice. I can't stop looking at it because the color work is so fun. 
And as I was knitting this, I realized I don't have any, or I did not before this, have any cream colored sweaters in my hand knit wardrobe. And I had nothing with reds. So this is very good for me, I think. It's a good departure. And it's the perfect holiday sweater. So I cannot wait to wear this all of November and December and the winter months ahead, January, like for all the things like throw a thermal underneath and go ice skating. You know, it's like I have all the ideas now and just, you know, hanging out at home. It's very easy and boxy and easy to throw on with jeans, which was the goal. Um, I did knit a size or two up for my normal size just for some ease. And I just want it to be like a comfy sweatshirt, which is exactly what it feels like. This yarn is super nice and comfortable to wear like right on my skin. I just have like a little tank underneath it and this does not feel itchy at all, but definitely very warm. It is the Fritis Garn by Sandus Garn that they used in the original sample, same colors and everything. This is the Sandus Garn book from last winter, I believe. And so that's how long it's been on my needles, but now it's done and that's okay because now I have a sweater for this holiday season and I'm just loving it so much. So yeah, this is like a size or two up. Um, I did make the sleeves a little bit long, so I have the option to cuff if I want to, because sometimes I like to roll them up, especially if I'm doing like dishes or washing my hands or anything. But it's also like just right where I stretch out my arms that they're not too short. So this feels just right to me. And I'm just excited to have another sweater done. Um, I did have a freak out moment where I thought it had bled and I was really worried, um, but it's fine. Uh, it was just after I was laying it out to dry and then if, after I was checking on it, like as it was drying, it did look pink in these cream areas. And I was like, no, this cannot happen because I had swatched and prepared for this and um, you know, done a big swatch with red, with both of the reds and the cream next to them both. And that was fine and I really like, um, manipulated it and, and let it soak for a long time. So I'm like, I know this is a good test. I just had to look out my window because our dear friends are right here out the window. <laughs> Hold on, let me see if I can show you. Okay, sorry. <laughs> they, they walk right past our living room windows all the time. Like, you know, sometimes it feels like they're inches away. And so that it startles me still. And I'm, I'm used to it, but also it's like, when you see someone or something walking right here. <laughs> so our dear friends are out there. We have several that come back every year and they kind of live in our backyard and have babies in our backyard. Anyway, yes, it's all very festive and wintry and <laughs> part of the vibes. But yes, what was I talking about? The bleeding. Um, so I waited till this was totally, totally dry till today. And then I, I did see it was just a little bit of the fibers had crossed over into the dis different sections. So the red had come into the white a little bit. So I just carefully used my gleaner to clean it up in between. And now I think it's totally fine. Um, it does not look pink anymore. Everything's fine. So, I, but I did have a moment of panic where I was like, uh oh, it was scary, but <laughs> all is well. And now I have a new holiday sweater and I'm so excited. So thanks for coming along for the journey. You've probably been watching me knit this for months. And so I'm very happy it's done. Last, but certainly not least, um, I try to keep this space positive and encouraging and nothing is going to change with that anytime soon. Um, but I also like to keep it real. I've never really hid my political views on here. If you've been watching for a while, there's things that pop up here and there. Um, I'm pretty open about everything on my Instagram. So you probably already know um, where I am with all of this. And but at the same time, I'm just a mom. I'm just a knitter. I don't have any magical insights. I don't, um, I don't have any magical solution. <laughs> and I think this past week has been anything but easy for so many of us. And I think we're all maybe trying to find the right way to move forward and there's no perfect answer. Um, but I just wanted to let you know, I see you. Uh, you know, as a mom and as a, someone who's comforting my own children who are upset about the outcome of the election. And just, I want you to understand that I understand if you are grieving or hurting or feeling scared or all of the above, 
Um, you might be cycling through all the feelings. And I feel like that's what's happening with me. Um, I feel like I'm a little bit more hardened this time, which is kind of sad. Um, but, you know, there's like the doom scroll. There's like the return of the worry and the anxiety and the feelings. And then you find yourself, you know, enjoying your family and your life and finding joy in the world still. And that's good. And, you know, sometimes then you fall back into the spiral. And I think that is normal and okay. And that's just part of moving forward, I guess. Um, but it's, you know, as so many people have said, it's okay to take your time and take some time to um, take care of yourself and take care of your loved ones and take care of your community. And then maybe just also rest and give yourself um, the permission to rest. Um, at the same time, it's, it's not exactly time to step back or hide out. I mean, in your own time, I think. Um, we move forward hand in hand, side by side with like-minded people in your community. We have to build this future that we believe in and it will take some work. And when we're ready, we can show up and do this together. Um, I think connecting with others is important, even other knitters, like we're having this little knitting retreat um, this weekend. I think this all matters, even these little things, um, finding people you care about and who care about you and connecting. Um, there are a million ways, big and small, to make a difference when you're ready. And I think we can all find those ways in our personal lives and, um, yeah, that's really it. I just wanted to not ignore the whole thing that's just happened to all of us and has kind of knocked me sideways is kind of how I feel. But I hope that we can all find light in the places that bring us together and find each other and at least hold on to that moving forward. So that's just something I wanted to say. That's all I have for today. Thank you for hanging out with me. I upload a new video every Saturday morning, so stop back next week and see what I'm working on then or if I've made any progress on any of these projects that I've started. Hopefully, yes. I am thinking maybe next week I'll do this. I do need to make um, a deadline list for my Mosi sweater. That's the one that is the tiny yarn and make some good solid deadlines because it worked for my Rhinebeck sweater and now that I see that that works I need goals to get there on time and then I'll leave like a whole month at the end just in case I fall behind and I think that's the good strategy for finishing a big sweater that can kind of be a slog like that so that's what I should maybe do for next time but anyway thank you for hanging out with me today please like and subscribe it really helps out my channel click the notification bell and yeah I'll see you next Saturday Take care, have a good weekend, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.